Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. My name is Gary Cabalde. I am a member of Ligaya ng Panginoon, serving as site servant leader of Pathways Makati. I started my journey with God back in 1995 when I attended the Choice Seminar through Ang Lingkod ng Panginoon, a Catholic charismatic community for single professionals. Thanks be to God and after 25 years, I am still a com- in a community of men and women who desire to follow God in their lives. Just like anyone else who are serving in this Choice Seminar, these are the men and women who are still sinful, struggling in their Christian journey, and yet they made the choice to continue walking with Jesus as we all go on with our life. Some of you may probably be asking, How is it like to be a follower of Christ for many years? You might be thinking that we live a life free of any anxieties or troubles and that our life is a bed of roses. Well, sad to say, that has not been our case. As a matter of fact, troubles, anxieties, problems, and even temptations never seem to leave us. They have been with us always. Jesus is correct when he said in John 16 verse 33 that in this life you will have trouble. But be brave, he further said, for I have defeated the world. Questions. Is it difficult to say no to sin? Is it impossible to run away from temptation and be faithful to the Lord? My answer, yes, it is difficult to say no to sin, but it is not impossible to turn away from it and be faithful to the Lord. How? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's going to be my presentation this afternoon. Three major parts that I'd like to highlight in this presentation. First, what is the power of the Holy Spirit? Second, what happens to us when we receive the Holy Spirit? And third, the obstacles in receiving the Holy Spirit. What is the power of the Holy Spirit? It is God Himself. He is the same God who desires to give us life and the courage to face the realities of life. In the Old Testament, during the days of Prophet Ezekiel, The people of God were like zombies. Have you ever seen a movie about zombies? They are the living dead. During the days of Ezekiel, the people were all enmeshed in sin and spiritual lifelessness like many Christians today. God said to Ezekiel in chapter 36 verses 26 to 27, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Do you know what a heart of stone is? It is a cold and stubborn attitude toward God. Did you ever have that kind of heart? Hmm. And God further said to Ezekiel, And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Have you ever wanted to do the right thing, but were overcome by temptation, and so you gave in to the call of the flesh? Do you remember the Filipino rap song that says, Gusto kong bumait, pero di ko magawa? Here is a promise of help and power to live God's way, to do what is right, and to live life to its fullest. And the Holy Spirit gives us that power. Let me share with you my close encounter with temptation. I remember when I was still single and have been a member of Lingkod ng Panginoon community for many years. I was once invited by a woman I met in a party. She was introduced by an office mate. She invited me 
to go to her condominium unit. Kaming dalawa lang. I already knew what would happen the moment that I stepped inside her condominium unit. I initially accepted the invitation. To be honest, mga kapatid, I really got excited. On our way to her unit, I was also praying to God, begging Him to allow me to have sex with this woman. And I bargained with Him. And I said that, Lord, last na ito. I even dared and said to God, Lord, please, ipikit niyo muna mga mata ninyo. Promise talaga, Lord, last na ito. Lo and behold, God clearly spoke to me and said, All the things that I have learned about Him, His teachings, and His love, this is the time I should put them into practice. Say no to the invitation. And so that's what I did. I said no to the invitation. Whenever I would say this to my friends and office mates, ang laging sagot sa akin, sayang naman. Palay na yung lumalapit, hindi mo pa tinuka. Ang sagot ko naman, eh hindi naman ako manok, bakit ko tutukain? Anak ako ng Diyos. After running away from that temptation, I praised God and thanked Him. I didn't realize that I could turn away from something that I was addicted with in the past. It is all because of His Holy Spirit working in me. Next, the Holy Spirit also gives us courage in times of fear. In the books of Acts of the Apostle, chapter 2, verses 1 to 18, it tells us the story about the Pentecost or the coming down of the Holy Spirit to the apostles like a tongue of fire. This is when Peter and other disciples were transformed from a frightened, cowardly man who deserted Jesus into a bold and powerful apostles who were able to persuade many people to turn to the Lord in faith and repentance. This is again the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the same Spirit that works in me, that works in the lives of Denis Sulit, Mark Toquero, Chito Sabala, James Labayo, and Brian Villamil, site leaders of Central Pathways who never imagined in the past that they will become courageous men in proclaiming God's words to others. Second part, what happens to us when we receive the Holy Spirit? At least three things will happen to us. First, we become united with God. In John chapter 14, verses 16 to 18, Jesus said that He will ask the Father and He will give us another advocate to help us and be with us forever, the Spirit of Truth. He lives in us and will be in us. The Holy Spirit enables us to experience more of God's presence and love. He deepens our personal relationship with Him. We can experience that He is in us and we are in Him. Through His Spirit, we can receive God's counsel. We can hear His voice and understand what He wants us to do. In 2001, I was discerning if I was going to propose to my ex-girlfriend then if I could marry her. The problem was, I was actually unemployed during that time. Wala akong trabaho. But deep in my heart, getting married was my call. And so I prayed and sought the Lord. I heard Him telling me that it was okay for me to propose. And so I did. Good thing that my ex-girlfriend then accepted my proposal and lo and behold, brothers and sisters, one week after I proposed, I got a job. And I've been married for the same woman for almost 18 years now. Salamat sa Diyos. Though, the second thing that will happen to us when we receive the Holy Spirit, is a new nature taking place in us. 
or a different spiritual power happening to us. The Holy Spirit will change us, not by robbing us of our personalities, but by purifying us and making us sons and daughters of God. When we receive the power of the Holy Spirit, He produces His fruit in us, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility or gentleness, and self-control. Do you ever want to give up your smoking and drinking habits? Are you still addicted to pornographic material? Gusto ba ninyong itigil yung pagmumura sa bawat dulo ng inyong mga salita? Madali ba mag-init ang ulo mo? Lagi ba kayo nag-aaway, nagsasalpukan at nagkakasakitang mag-asawa? Ask for the power of the Holy Spirit and let Him produce His fruit in you. That's what I did. I used to smoke and drink a lot. Mahilig po akong magmura sa bawat dulo ng aking salita. Mabilis uminit ang ulo ko e eh, number one po ako sa kalokohan, sa kabastusan, at sa green joke ay napakagaling ko po dyan. All of this stopped not because of my own strength, but because God granted my request to give this up and I sought the power of the Holy Spirit in me. The third thing that will happen to us when we receive the Holy Spirit we will have the power to serve God and others. Because of the Holy Spirit, we will develop a love for God and for His people. We will grow in our compassion and mercy towards others. Some of us will grow in our decision to spread the good news, evangelize, and bring others to Christ. Just like your friends or office mates who invited you to join and try this Choices Seminar. They invited you because of their love for God and love for you. We all have tasted and see how good our God is and we want to share this wonderful gift to you. And because you will develop that love for God and for His people through service, the Holy Spirit also will give you His gifts. These gifts are given to help build up the body of Christ and help encourage and inspire His people. Some of His gifts are wisdom, faith, healing, performing miracles, preaching, prophesying, speaking in tongues, and explaining what was said in tongues. In a prayer gathering, there are two most common and visible gifts used, praying in tongues and prophesying God's word to the body. What does praying in tongues mean? This is a personal prayer that only you and the Lord can understand regardless of the words you use or even lack of it. Remember what happened during the Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down on the apostles? The apostles spoke in different languages. Let me read the passage. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one he heard their own language being spoken by the apostles. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? A good analogy of this is the deep bond between a mother and her baby. I remember when my teenage daughter now, when she was one year old, she would say the words Dogan, which means go down, and Mesene. That's how she would normally say it, which means Christmas tree. And only my wife could understand those words. Silang dalawa lang ang nagkakaintindihan. It is the same thing with God. When we establish that deep bond with God, words will not suffice to
to express how grateful we are. Our prayer of worship, praise, and honor, words will not be enough, brothers and sisters. Second most common gift being used in a prayer gathering is the gift of prophecy. This is when God inspires us to speak to the body about His instructions, His encouragement, His consolation. How do we do it in a prayer meeting? The prayer meeting leader at some point will invite the body to pause and ask if there is any message from the Lord that they want to share. The person who will speak the word of God for his people are either messages taken from the Bible or a direct message spoken to them during their prayer time. If you have further questions about the gifts of tongue and the gifts of prophecy, kindly ask your discussion group leaders and they will explain to you even more or even cite you more example as to how it is being done in a prayer meeting. Now, let me exhort you, brothers and sisters, to reflect on these gifts very seriously and ask the Lord how He can use you more for His purpose and also ask what gifts you want Him to give to you. You can ask for one gift or two gifts, or you can ask for everything. God will give you His gifts according to His purpose and glory. But I have to warn you, there are obstacles that will prohibit you from receiving the power of the Holy Spirit. And let me cite four of them. First, the feeling of unworthiness. Well, who are worthy for Him as we are all sinners, right? And yet, He saved us when we are all still sinners. Second, the fear of looking foolish. I would rather look foolish for the sake of my God than to look beautiful in the eye of the evil one. Psalm 84 verse 10 says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Third, a feeling of doubt. Remember what Doc Dennis mentioned at the start of the Choices Seminar about having an expectant faith? Expect that something good will happen to you when you decide to choose God. And last, having pride. It is up to us to give it up, right? The only way to address this is through humility and obedience to God. We have to accept that we cannot do anything without God. Now let me pause for a while as you might have some questions about this presentation. Is the power of the Holy Spirit, His gifts and fruit, are they too good to be true? Are they really for real? Can the Holy Spirit really help us live a joyful and courageous life in the midst of all uncertainties and chaos on this world? My answers? No, it is not too good to be true. His power, His gifts and fruit are for real, and He can help us or help you live a joyful and courageous life in the midst of all uncertainties and chaos on this world only if you will allow Him to come to you. It is the same Holy Spirit who spoke to prophet Ezekiel in the Old Testament. The same Spirit who empowered the apostles during the Pentecost. The same Spirit who helped me run away from the temptation and say no to commit sin. It is the same Holy Spirit who continues to help us avoid our favorite sins, go back to our old vices and bad habits. It is the same Holy Spirit who will help us live a life that is pleasing to the Lord. Only if you will choose Jesus Christ to experience His love for you and see for yourself how good and great our God is. 
And I will bet my life on this one, brothers and sisters, that when you choose Jesus Christ, you will never go wrong with that decision. God bless you all. Thank you.